Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And the Albanese Labor government understands that housing is more than just a roof over someone's head. It's about employment, it's about school, friends and family. It provides security and economic well-being. And it's about being able to, to participate in the community. And that's why the Albanese Labor government is committed to bring home ownership back into the reach of uh, Australians by helping more and more Australians around the country to move into their own home. For many Novocastrians, this can feel like a far off dream. Data released late last year showed the income required to buy a unit or a house in Newcastle was above the national average and higher than capital cities such as Melbourne. Home buyers in Newcastle need to earn an income of more than $237,000 to comfortably service a house mortgage. Those in the market for a unit in Newcastle would need to earn a minimum household income of more than $181,000. In comparison, uh, in Melbourne, a household income of $171,000 uh, is needed to comfortably service a house mortgage. The average full-time salary in Australia is around $96,000, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics data, and slightly less in Newcastle. I know these statistics won't come as a shock to Novocastrians looking, to, looking around, trying to get a foot into the housing market. And these statistics, they tell a story. Once upon a time, the Australian dream of buying your own home was achievable without intergenerational wealth. But owning a home has decreased over successive generations and is becoming more and more unrealistic. And we want to change that. Our government understands the seriousness of this issue, which we've already acted on. We know it will take a suite of measures to help bring home ownership back into the reach for more Australians, and that is exactly what we are doing. One of our key election commitments was expanding the Home Guarantee Scheme, help, helping eligible home buyers secure finance sooner through government support. We've recently reached an important milestone with the scheme, having now helped 100,000 people into home ownership, including 2,235 in Lake Macquarie and Newcastle. That's more than 2,000 Novocastrians who now own a home who would otherwise not, thanks to the Albanese Labor government. The Home Guarantee Scheme enables um, an eligible home buyer to buy a home with as little as 5% deposit and the government guarantees the other 15%. This saves home buyers from having to pay lenders mortgage insurance, meaning a savings of tens of thousands of dollars. We know that the average time to, take, to save now for a deposit uh, on a house on a medium income now exceeds a decade. And the home, own, the home Guarantee Scheme means people who can service a loan for a mortgage but can't get over that hurdle of getting a deposit to together, they're given a foot up. And the Albanese Labor Government has also expanded eligibility of the Home Guarantee Scheme to allow joint applications between friends and family members, not just singles married or de facto applicants. And that's a great thing. We need more choices, more housing options in Australia, not less. And the results speak for themselves. Almost one in three first home buyers are now using this government scheme, a significant increase from the last year of the former Liberal government. It's just one of a part of our ambitious housing reform agenda. The Help to Buy scheme, this legislation that's before the House this evening, um, it's another part of help we're providing to uh, Australians trying to set up their own home. And it's help for thousands more Australians wanting to own their own home. Through Help to Buy, the Commonwealth will cut the cost of buying a home by up to 40%. Participants will only require a minimum of 2% deposit and will benefit from lower ongoing mortgage repayments through having a smaller home loan. 
It will be the first national shared equity scheme of its kind, supporting up to 40,000 eligible Australians to purchase a home. This scheme will be open to applications for four years with 10,000 places available each year. The Help to Buy Bill 2023 gives Housing Australia the power to enter into shared equity arrangements. Eligible participants will be able to access the scheme through participating lenders alongside a standard mortgage. This scheme will help participants overcome both the hurdle of saving for a deposit and the hurdle of servicing a mortgage. That's because the Commonwealth will provide equity, an equity contribution, and scheme participants will have lower ongoing repayments due to that smaller home loan being taken out in the first place. The financial risk and benefit, capital gains and losses, will be shared between the participant and the Commonwealth, proportionate to their interests. All states have agreed through the National Cabinet to progress legislation so the scheme can run nationally. That is a great thing. We have every state and territory in Australia signed up to this scheme. The bill also in includes the administrative framework for help to buy, including that Housing Australia must report to the Minister on an annual basis. The Minister must cause a review of help to buy as soon as possible after the end of three years from the commencement of the bill and that regulations for help to buy may enable administrative um, review of Housing Australia's decision, decisions under the program. Help to buy will be open to assist people who have ho owned homes before and those who haven't. It will help couples, singles, siblings, friends, people close to retirement, those just starting out in the workforce and anyone eligible in between. This is an ambitious government committed to a housing agenda that will improve housing affordability and supply. And while states and territories, uh, we're often told by those opposite, it's states and territories who bear the primary responsibility for housing, uh, including the provision of homelessness services, the Albanese Labor government has an ambitious housing reform agenda to ensure that all Australians can have a secure and safe place to call home. Indeed, unlike those opposite who say, not our responsibility, wash their hands, take no, no responsibility for the providing citizens one of the most basic of citizenship needs and rights, and that is safe, affordable housing, um, they insist, no, 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 not our job. They anticipate voting no, but I beg them to rethink what they're doing, particularly those in regional seats, particularly those in regional seats. Labor's housing agenda, of course, beyond this bill, uh, includes a $1.7 billion one-year extension of the National Housing and Homelessness Agreement with states and territories, including $67.5 million um, in boost to homelessness services. We've also um, uh, got the development of a new national housing and homelessness plan. We have the $10 billion Housing Australia Future Fund, the first of its kind. A national target uh, to build 1.2 million well-appointed located homes, $3 billion in a new homes uh, bonus and $5 million uh, housing support program. There's the National Housing Accord, which includes federal funding to deliver 10,000 affordable homes over five years from uh, 2024, and that'll be matched by another 10,000 from the uh, state and territory governments. A $2 billion social housing accelerator fund to deliver around 4,000 new social homes across Australia an investment of an additional $1 billion in the National Housing Infrastructure Facility, again, to support more homes, up um, to $575 million in funding already um, unlocked from the National Housing Infrastructure Facility with homes under construction now. Remember those opposite tried to block these bills before, saying we couldn't do it, you know, we were too ambitious, not our responsibility, not our job. Well, those homes under construction now. 
increasing the maximum uh, rate of the Commonwealth rent assistance by 15 per cent, the largest increase in more than 30 years. Things that only Labor governments ever, ever worry about and indeed deliver on. There's the additional $2 billion in financing for more social and affordable rental housing through the Housing uh, Australia. We've got new incentives to boost the supply of rental housing by changing arrangements for investments in build-to-rent accommodation and the states and territories committing to a better deal for renters to harmonise and strengthen renters' rights right across the nation. This is good news. This is good news for every generation of Australian citizens. Those opposite like to often regard themselves as a party for home ownership, yet they will oppose this bill. I've never met a Liberal in this Australian Parliament who actually thinks that they have a role to play in the provision of housing for our citizens. No, no, no is usually the answer. That's the job of the states and territories. No matter how dire the situation, uh, no matter how big a housing crisis our nation faces, um, that is not the Labor way. Indeed, it is only Labor governments that have ever stepped up to deliver housing policy at a national level. And this is legislation uh, that delivers one of the most basic fundamental rights uh, for citizens, and that is access to safe, a safe and affordable place to call home. There is nothing more basic. There is no more basic need than that in our country. And Chifley understood this, the first of the great Labor leaders to uh, invest in federal housing programs. And of course, that was followed by Whitlam, who also understood fully the importance of housing and proper services delivered sewerage to the suburbs. Again, vehemently opposed at the time, not the job of federal governments, we were told. People facing, you know, dire circumstances with very clear, obvious needs. Um, I'm not sure how those opposite look those people squarely in the, in the eyes and say, sorry, not our job. We know, you know, that was the mantra under the former government. Let's not, you know, my one piece of advice to members opposite is do not carry that through your term of opposition because no... You know, Australians who are squeezed out of housing markets, who are being squeezed out of rental markets, who are deeply worried about their capacity to, you know, have a safe, affordable place to call home, they will not thank you for shirking your responsibilities. They expect a government to be able to listen to their cries, to formulate policy and legislation that in fact delivers on their needs. We've seen, you know, following Chifley and Whitlam, of course we had the Hawke and Keating governments. Again, understanding the need for national housing uh, policies. And uh, this, of course, was followed through by Rudd and Gillard. Then we go back to the hiatus during the sort of um, Abbott, Turnbull and Morrison government years. No, no homes to be built then. It's, uh, but for those, for Labor leaders and for Labor members in this parliament, the idea that you would wash your hands of res any responsibility to deliver housing uh, for citizens at a time of tremendous need, it's utterly abhorrent. It is unimaginable. Um, but I guess when you've got a target of building zero uh, houses, uh, you know, it's little wonder that no homes, no new housing ever came to fruition. We do have an ambitious plan. We are a government that acts, not content to sit back and say, not our job, not us, not Labor. Australians can have a safe and secure place to call home. We should be working every day and every night to ensure that that is possible. 
and delivering on help to buy alongside all of our other housing commitments is part of that commitment to the Australian people. It's what drives our government every day. Our ambitious housing reform plan is working and you should support it.